So again, a new technology switch from current once through cycles to a recycling process could mean that we really have no issues to do with uranium in the future. Next slide, please. The other issue is, of course, energy does remain the heart of the climate challenge. And what, what I've, we've plotted here from the World Energy Outlook, again, are the emissions uh, under two periods. This first period from 1900 to 2009, and you can see that the European Union and the United States are the major emitters. Uh, these are in gigatons of uh, CO2 over that period. But if we press the button again, we'll see that for the next period, from 2010 to 2035, we expect that the emissions from China will even pass those from the uh, European Union. So we sometimes get the, 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 the comment that uh, developing countries say that you Western countries caused this problem, you should solve it first. But in fact, this graph shows that that, that is switching. And very soon, China will uh, overtake Europe in terms of its emissions. And eventually, China will even become the highest per capita emitter as well. So the next slide, please. So the, I, the International Energy Agency and ourselves looked at if we were serious about trying to stabilize climate at 450 parts per million, which would keep the temperature rise to 2 degrees, what would we need to do? What would be the lowest cost way by which we could provide that, that, that energy source. And so we've just this nuclear roadmap to 2050, and in that roadmap it indicates that, that for a low-cost solution, nuclear would grow to 24% of, of world use, around about uh, 1,200 gigawatts. But there's no magic bullet here. What it showed also is that you need to combine that very seriously with growth in renewables, with a much stronger pattern of energy efficiency, and with the use of, of other methods of generating energy as well. And you can see again that down at the bottom that China and India uh, provide the, uh, the major parts of where that growth will, will occur. Next slide. So the roadmap indicated that nuclear is available now for deployment. The obstacles to that are policy-related. It is a big decision to make for some countries. It's whether there's a sufficient industrial base. The challenges are largely financial in many countries because the investment is very large, and it's a long-term commitment. Next slide. To get to 1,200 gigawatts would require you to double the industrial capacity that we currently have. Uh, that's not as difficult as it might have been in the 70s and the 80s when companies were very vertically integrated. Now the supply chain around the world is very diverse, and th that should be something that's possible. It would require, of course, a, a growth in highly skilled human resources. It would need lots of progress to really on the disposal of spent fuel and high-level waste because we can't continue to develop nuclear without solving the waste problem. And I don't think the, the public would accept that. Safety and physical protection must be maintained, and we need to start moving to generation four reactor technologies which will offer improved sustainability, economics, proliferation resistance, and safety. Next slide. Just very quick words about economics. When the, uh, we compared the costs of generating electricity from a large number of power plants being constructed around the world, over 200, about 200 power plants, 17 nuclear, but all sorts of others, fossil fuels, renewable, uh, coal with CCS, offshore, onshore wind, etc. And we did it for three regions of the world, North America, uh, Europe, and Asia. Then nuclear was the most competitive option on a levelized cost basis, so that's the total lifetime cost basis. If the financing costs were at 5%, followed in this case by coal with carbon capture. However, if financing costs go up, as the next slide shows, and they were 10% rather than 5%, 
then nuclear is no longer the most competitive in Europe, but remains the most competitive in North America and, and in Asia. Of course, the North American situation will be influenced by the availability of shale gas. The next slide shows the reason why that's the case for nuclear. Nuclear is very strongly, uh, its financing depends very much on the initial investment. That's up to 60% of the total cost. Its fuel costs are relatively low. Operation maintenance about 25%. So anything which changes the capital part, part of it has a big effect. So clearly the industry needs to ensure that it can build to time and budget and financing has to be arranged to ensure that the risk attached to the financing part does not become too high. Uh, next slide. This just illustrates again that the discount rate and construction costs for nuclear are the dominant factors. Fuel is not a dominant factor in terms of cost. If we compare that with the next graph, you'll see that if that was for gas, then fuel costs because become the dominant issue for gas and not construction costs. And of course, gas prices have been very volatile around the world, uh, particularly so in Europe where there's been supply in, uh, interruptions as well. So uh, again, the issues of that competition, as it were, between gas and nuclear uh, are very important. Next slide. Some people have asked us, can nuclear work in a liberalized market where you don't have long-term contracts in place? So we had a look at the profitability index of, of nuclear versus coal, which is in, in, in dark. Uh, nuclear is in the darker blue, gas is in the lighter blue, assuming a carbon price in place. And you can see that uh, essentially uh, nuclear is uh, as competitive or more competitive than, than gas at the carbon prices that we're expecting to see over the next decade or so. But with the introduction of, of carbon pricing, coal quickly becomes uncompetitive. And it's not clear that coal could remain in the market if, if, if that was the case. So I think there are good prospects economically for nuclear, provided the initial investment can be uh, um, dealt with in an effective way. Uh, there are ways by which that's done in Finland. It's done by the major users getting together and providing the, the finance to build nuclear. Uh, the Russian Federation is offering the build on operate scheme where they will take the, the financial risk in a number of countries. But at some point, private investors need to come into the market. And I think the things which will do that will be issues related to carbon pricing and issues related to the stability of price into the future such as is incurring with the electricity market reforms in the United Kingdom at the moment. Next slide, please. Of course, there are great concerns of the public after Fukushima Daiichi. Can nuclear power really ever be safe? If so, how do we ensure a better level of safety than we currently have? What about waste disposal, which remains apparently an unresolved issue? Is the non-proliferation regime tough enough to ensure no diversion of material for other uses? What about life extension of the existing fleet? Are these older plants, should they be life extended? And then are the regulatory authorities strong enough and independent enough to ensure proper scrutiny and monitoring of, of nuclear power? Next slide, please. So let me give you my view on, on those issues in the medium term. There is no doubt the action will slow the development of nuclear power. Public opinion has been strongly affected. The lessons must be learned and they must be incorporated in design and siting issues. There needs to be enhanced safety measures, particularly as relates to external hazards. Since Chernobyl and Three Mile Island, the industry thought the, the major thing they needed to concentrate on was what might happen internally to a nuclear power plant, and not enough attention was given to possible external hazards. Of course, it's very hard to see the uh, twin circumstances in Japan happening in many other countries, but nevertheless, attention must be given to what possible combinations of external events 
could put nuclear plants at, at risk. Next slide. However, I think in the longer uh, term, there are things which make the situation currently different to that which applied after uh, Three Mile Island and, and Chernobyl. One of them, as I said, is that electricity demand is expected to triple by 2050. CO2 emissions must decrease. In fact, the last issue of world, the World Energy Outlook indicated that if we really wanted to keep to 450 parts per million, if we keep going at our current rate, we will use up that quota by 2017. So we have a very short period of time to make major changes to a low carbon future. So we have to think about decarbonizing the electricity sector and prices will continue to remain high. So that's a very positive for nuclear financing. Renewables as yet can't be deployed at large scale. The alternatives to fossil fuel are generally hydro. I point out that nuclear has saved approximately 65 gigatons of CO2 emissions from 1971 to 2007 compared to 250 gigatons emitted. That many of the countries in the world looking at nuclear, China, India, etc., really have no other options. Their indigenous access to other sources of energy is very limited. Uh, they do need to deploy all sources of, of energy. They have huge demands uh, to see that energy grow, and therefore we expect to see wide deployment of nuclear in these countries. Also, well, Generation 3 reactors are starting to be built. They have uh, many advantages in terms of, of safety levels, and uh, really many of those have learned a lot of the lessons uh, which, which Generation 2 plants are now learning after, after Fukushima. And secondly, I think that the industry has the option with small and medium reactors to start dealing with that finance issue and with that you're building a reactor which could be totally passively safe. Next slide. So just in conclusion, demand for energy will continue to grow. We need to apply all measures possible to deal with this. Nuclear power is attractive for security of supply greenhouse gas reduction and economics, but the economics depend on financing issues and on methods to keep uh, the risk attached to that financing low, but they also will require the introduction of a carbon pricing regime. But under reasonable conditions, uh, the economic analysis that we have done comparing other nuclear with other energy sources shows that nuclear is competitive. Up to March 2011, there was a growing consensus that nuclear would expand and expand rapidly. The recent accident has caused many countries to reconsider that, uh, but those without alternatives are likely to continue down that path. The concerns of a safety, waste, non-proliferation must be addressed by the industry, and they require technical solutions, uh, but principally they require agreements on policy and social acceptance. And finally, the future of nuclear will, in the end, depend on its ability to restore public confidence, which I think has been the greatest victim of the Fukushima Daiichi accident. Thank you.